Let me just begin by saying happy holidays, everybody. Although I got to be honest, the country didn't get off to the best start this week. A huge gust of wind knocked over the national Christmas tree in Washington on Tuesday. The sad part is it happened just as Biden was getting ready to wish everyone a happy Easter. Yeah, America used to be a shining city on a hill, but now we're just a blinking tree on the ground. The Christmas decorations are up at the White House, though, and you got to feel for the Biden family because it's impossible to tell what's fake snow and what's real cocaine. Speaking of Hunter, the Bidens chose not to hang stockings over the fireplace for their grandkids, and some say it's because they didn't want to bring attention to Hunter's love child. We can't confirm that, but we do know there won't be a nativity set at the White House this year because they couldn't find three wise men and a virgin. Jimmy. Back here in the Apple, thousands of pro-Palestinian protesters flooded Rockefeller Center for the lighting of their Christmas tree on Wednesday. Now, it might seem a little strange to you that someone would protest Jews at a Christmas party, but that's only because you're not an idiot. The women who support Hamas are supporting a group that doesn't support them. And a lot of the guys at these events have no idea what they're doing. They just want to get laid. Seriously, half these male protesters think Gaza Strip is a gentleman's club. The point is, none of this is accomplishing anything. And it's only furthering the divide in society that grows a little wider every day we're on social media. People under the age of 25 don't know this, but there was a time when Americans didn't have Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Nope. All we had was happiness, and this thing you'll have to Google called privacy. But when you look around nowadays, it feels like everyone in the world is on the verge of snapping. The main reason why is we're all cranky, because in addition to working our regular jobs, social media has us all working full-time paparazzi jobs, where we follow ourselves around in search of breaking news that's worth sharing with the world. First there was TMZ, now there's MeMZ. Like, we don't keep up with the Kardashians, we are the Kardashians. Like, we're now sharing every ridiculous detail of our existence because social media destroyed our self-awareness in the name of getting likes. Oh, we have no idea how much dumber the smartphone has made us. Think about it. As you watch this, people are posting pictures of their dinner on Facebook right now. Do you know how stupid that is? 20 years ago, if you were to take a picture of your dinner, go and get it developed and then drive back to a group of strangers like, lasagna! They'd be like, what the hell is wrong with you? They wouldn't even know what to say because the only people who ever told you what they had for dinner were kids on the short bus. My old neighbor, Ricky. Hey, Ricky, how you doing? I had a hamburger with ketchup. Thank you, Ricky. Some of you aren't laughing right now because you're deleting a burrito picture. Oh, hey, hey, hey. hey Amy, Amazon! Social media has ruined relationships everywhere because we're all way too connected. Like people always say, oh, the two political parties can't coexist anymore. But the truth is, we just spend too much time coexisting. We've always had tons of people in our lives we disagreed with politically, but we used to go days and weeks without running into them. Now you see them every second of the day because they're trapped inside your phone running on a hot take hamster wheel. Everybody has that one friend who's become a constitutional lawyer on Facebook, like weighs in on everything. Seriously, Facebook needs a button called Who Asked You? Because nobody cares. My buddy Vinny paints houses for a living. It's a great job. The other day he wrote a 9,000 word essay about the debt ceiling. I'm like, yo, Benjamin Moore, how about you stick to the kitchen ceiling and we all get on with our lives? But that's why we're so divided. Social media encourages fighting because the more time you spend pounding away on your keyboard, the more advertising money they can make from having you there. Except Elon, who said this on Wednesday. There was all of the criticism. There was advertisers leaving. We talked to Bob Iger today. I hope today. they stop. You hope? Uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's gonna try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go yourself. <laughs> but for real, Social media has made our country so tribal that the worst ideas go mainstream in minutes because people support anything their party pushes, no matter how insane it gets. Think about that. For three years, Democrats have been pushing to defund the police. No justice, no peace. Defund the police. 
weapons grade stupid. And the only reason they didn't defund the police is because Biden thinks the police are a British rock band. But defunding police is dumb, and we've all known it was dumb since we were little kids. Growing up, you all played cops and robbers, and the cops were always the good guys. True story, every kid played two games, cops and robbers and cowboys and Elizabeth Warrens. Being Native American has been part of my story, I guess, since the day I was born. <laughs> but stick with me. Social media broke society's compass by getting people to abandon nuance and critical thinking and simply support anything that upsets their political opponents. That's the only way student loan forgiveness could exist. When I ran for president, I vowed to fix our broken student loan program. Prior to social media becoming a thing, if someone asked strangers to pay off a loan that they took out, half the country wouldn't be calling them a victim. The whole country would call them an inconsiderate jackass. And I say that as a parent of a 15-year-old kid. Like, I'm on the front lines of this. Liberals come up to me all the time. They're like, Jimmy, you're a dad. Aren't you worried about the soaring cost of tuition? I'm like, dude, my son is six foot five. He's getting a women's basketball scholarship. You guys are saving up for college. I'm saving up for some duct tape. Lincoln is going to Duke. We just need to hide those blue devils. The point is, if you want to help the world in the age of social media, we don't need more Republicans or more Democrats. We just need less jerks. The only group left in this country that's not fighting all the time is the Amish, because they're not trapped in an app that's making them kill each other for likes. I'm milking your cow for you. Yeah, it took a little while to get her warmed up. She sure is a stubborn one. Whew. We don't have a cow. We have a bull. <laughs> and by the way, just when you thought the Amish couldn't get any more mellow, I covered a story this week on America's Newsroom that the Amish are now growing marijuana as a cash crop in Pennsylvania. Yeah, the good news is business is booming. The bad news is it's now taking tourists five hours to get out of the corn maze. Any drug dealer can sell you a bag of Purple Haze or Maui Waui, but only an Amish drug dealer can get you high as a kite and then sell you a kite in the gift shop. But we'd all be a lot happier if we took a page out of the Pennsylvania playbook and lived a little bit more like the Amish. Because the truth is, the world isn't half as horrible as it feels like when you open up your phone. It's just that social media has brought out the absolute worst in everyone on it. And if you disagree, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, at Jimmy Fallon. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.